the past few weeks, I have been gaming on the Alienware 34 inch OLED ultra wide gaming monitor. And in this video, I'm going to tell you guys all about it. This thing is absolutely fantastic, but it is not perfect. And then I have a, a little bit something extra to talk about as far as future monitor releases at the end of the video. Let's talk about the design real quick and get all of the boring stuff out of the way. So this is a 34 inch ultra wide monitor that is more or less just an extended version of a 27 inch gaming monitor. You have this two tone black and white design going along the back of the monitor and they have made sure to build all of the LEDs actually into the monitor as well. Where previously on old Alienware monitors, they would actually build some of the LEDs into the stand. Now they have uh, done an LED ring around where the stand goes to give you that little shine on your wall behind you. It's not the brightest RGB, but uh, it's definitely there. There's that zone, another zone on the power button and another one underneath the Alienware logo on the front. And then there is that little light up alien head on the back of the monitor as well. As far as your ports, you have one display port, 1.4 port, which is the only port that you should be using while using this monitor on PC. And then you have two HDMI 2.0 ports that are limited to just 100 hertz. Now I say that because the display port can go up to 175 hertz, which is the maximum refresh rate of this monitor. And that's what you 100% want to be using if you're using this on PC. In addition to that, you also have four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. And honestly speaking, I'm really glad that two of those ports are still located on the bottom of the monitor. Very easy to use, great for testing products or just having something be really, really close to you. Like, let's just say that you want to make sure that you have the best connection to your wireless gaming mouse. You can plug the dongle right at the bottom of the monitor and you're going to get the best connection. And I don't know why more monitor manufacturers do not put the USB ports in a very accessible place other than just putting them along the other ports like your display ports and whatnot, because you just can't reach them very easily and it doesn't make sense to reach around your monitor especially if it's something that you use all the time the stand is massive as always honestly speaking if you don't have a 30 inch wide desk good luck using this thing on your desk you 100 want to get a monitor wall mount and the vase amount that they include in the box is a little bit weird because the slot that you connect the stand or vase amount adapter to on the back of the monitor is really slim so you have to make sure that you look through your box to find the very specific vase mounting piece because if you don't have that you're not going to be able to mount this monitor and it is a standard vase amount when you connect that little adapter so it should be very easy to mount it now let's go ahead and talk about the panel itself so this is a 34 inch 3440 by 1440p ultra wide display that features 175 hertz g-sync ultimate certification and 0.1 millisecond greater grade response time because this is again an oled gaming monitor now the display itself is actually glossy instead of matte and what that does for your contrast is it makes it so much better honestly speaking the glossy coating is very good because it's really not that reflective like you can use this monitor in a well-lit room with very little issues if any at all and even just for me when recording a lot of the b-roll shots for this video i really did not have issues with a lot of glare reflecting from all the different lights that i have in my office this thing does a really great job at eliminating a lot of that glare the only time that you're ever going to have problems with reflections is if you have something that's really bright and powerful very close to the display but i think that the fact that the display is actually curved a little bit helps a lot with eliminating a lot of that glare so whenever you're using this monitor well at room you won't have any problems with glare with that being said this monitor is also a qd oled panel with vesa display hdr 400 true black certification and what that means is that you can get up to 400 nits of peak brightness during regular HDR usage, but there is another HDR mode that gets you up to 1000 nits of peak brightness. But to be honest, I've been using this monitor on Windows 10 as well as Mac OS. In Windows 10, it really does not handle HDR that great until you get in game. If you're using the HDR 1000 mode, just a browser on your PC, Honestly speaking, your experience is probably not gonna be that great unless you're just watching content. Anything other than watching content, like browsing the web, just using any regular application, you're probably not gonna have the greatest time using the HDR 1000 mode built into the monitor. If you're gonna use it, use the 400 mode and leave Windows HDR turned up because quite frankly, it's just not that good. In game, the HDR is great. You can see a lot of details in both the light and dark areas on the screen at the same time. And since it's OLED and all of the pixels are individual lit it has the absolute finest control over the bright and darker areas on the screen and you would be surprised I was definitely surprised myself 
how good the black stabilizer is on this monitor. To be completely truthful with you, I wish that it had a little bit more settings and I could crank up the dark areas even more. But during gameplay, I don't really have that tough of a time finding enemies in dark areas when I have the dark equalizer maxed out. If you turn the brightness up to about 80% and you use the creator display P3 mode, you should be good to go. And if you switch it to the FPS mode, you really shouldn't have any issues finding enemies or whatever inside of those dark corners. So one thing that's nice about this monitor is that there is no response time modes that you can change because it's just an OLED panel. There is one set response time for the panel and the ghosting performance, or I should say lack thereof, was absolutely incredible. This is the best performance I've ever seen from any monitor. It is literally crystal clear in terms of the motion blur or lack thereof because there, there isn't any, there isn't any. It's absolutely insane how good this is. I did not even think that this was possible, but apparently all the monitors going forward that are high-end gaming monitors need to be OLED because this is absolutely insane. In terms of the factory readings for color calibration, using the creator modes, there is a display P3 mode as well as an sRGB mode. The sRGB mode, in my opinion, didn't really do that well it was 97 percent when it comes to srgb but it was really bad when it came to adobe rgb so if you use that color space i wouldn't trust using that srgb mode i would definitely go ahead and use the standard mode and just get it calibrated so that it could be accurate for the workflow that you do but the dcip 3 mode on the other hand dell states that this monitor is able to achieve 99.3 percent of the dcip 3 with a delta e of less than two from the factory and when i measured it in the standard mode as well as the creator dcip 3 mode i got the same reading at 90 eight percent dcip3 performance now this monitor's average brightness is going to be around 250 nits maybe a little bit more a little bit less just depending on what you have on the screen and what's going on but i will say that it's really not as bad as it sounds and this is an lcd monitor that we're talking about with a matte or satin coating it will probably be an issue because honestly speaking the colors are not going to be nearly as vibrant but with this glossy oled panel it looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It looks very, very good. And when you combine the excellent color reproduction with the decent enough dark stabilizer and the incredibly fast panel, I kid you guys not, this thing is so fast. It doesn't feel quite as quick as a 240 hertz monitor in terms of like the smoothness that you see on the screen. But when it comes to the responsiveness just from your mouse and keyboard inputs, it does feel equally as quick if not slightly faster than a 240 hertz or even a 360 hertz monitor and, and that's crazy to say but i genuinely believe it gives you that perception just because of the amount of motion blur that is missing and the g-sync ultimate module helps out so much that just the gaming performance of this thing is just incredibly smooth now unfortunately this is a, a blessing and a curse because my thing is with 34 inch ultra wides or really gaming on any ultra wide they're just a little bit too immersive as far as uh, competitive gaming performance but this is the thing if that's what you're looking for you're looking for the most immersive monitor i mean i'm having a tough time finding a more immersive monitor than this for pc gaming would i recommend this for console definitely not especially only capping out at 100 fps with the hdmi 2.0 and with the fact that you're going to have huge black bars 100 percent of the time playing on console anyways because you can't use ultra white monitors on console and get it to fill the whole screen unless you stretch it and that just looks ugly so don't do that i know some of you guys are going to ask in the comment section there's your answer do not buy this monitor if you're just playing on console. It's fine because the sides will be completely pitch black because the OLED display has individual control over all the pixels and it's not gonna bloom or anything, but it's just not a good buy in my opinion for console. Again, if you're playing PC games, this thing is absolutely insane but it's not perfect. The first issue that I had was actually not while gaming at all. I never had this issue while gaming, but for whatever reason, randomly while using this monitor, and especially when using Adobe Premiere Pro, I would get like these random FPS drops and it would do it to like my entire computer. I don't know why, I don't know if it's a recent Windows update or something that happened, but it only happens when I have this monitor plugged in. When I have it unplugged and I'm using my other two monitors that are LCD instead of OLED, and I know that's weird to say, but when I had this monitor unplugged, 
that never happens and it feels like the monitor drops from like 175 fps down to like 10 or 15 fps max and it's fluctuating between those because it just gets really really slow i'm not blaming the monitor per se and i don't know if that's something to do with an issue with the display poor or an issue with computer or an issue with my graphics card or something like that maybe it's a driver issue i'm really not sure but again when i don't have this monitor plugged in it doesn't happen. And the strange part is that never happens in game, so that has never bothered me. It's only when I'm doing things like video editing or something on PC, and it happens probably a couple times an hour. So it is a little annoying. Another interesting thing about this monitor is that it does have two modes to help you fight getting OLED burn-in, because I know that's what a lot of you guys are probably worried about when we've seen OLED TVs and phones as well that show a lot of static images. And a lot of us gamers, we play the same games all the time. So we're scared that our HUD is gonna be burned into the sides of the monitor for some reason. But this is the thing, this monitor has two modes. It has a pixel refresh mode and a panel refresh mode that should help out with that burn in reduction or hopefully it never has burned in at all. In the three weeks that I've been using it, I haven't yet experienced any burn in and I have been testing it, but I think that's due to those two features because one of them definitely pops up and says, hey, your monitor has been on for a while, you should probably do this, and then you just go ahead and do that when you're not busy. But the other reason why I think that it hasn't gotten burn in is because you can't leave this monitor on all the time. When your monitor is idle, and even if you set your window settings to never turn off your display, after about an hour or two, the display will shut off by itself and it will entirely shut off. So if you have your peripherals plugged into it and you try to use those to wake your PC, it actually will not wake them up. You have to walk up to the monitor, hit the power button to turn it back on, and then you can use your peripherals to wake up your PC, which is something that I found that was a little bit annoying, but I understand why that is the case. Now, include it with your monitor in case anything does happen, like you get a bright pixel or dead pixel, or you happen to get burn in, you do have three years of advanced exchange included from Dell. And I will tell you that Dell's customer service is actually pretty good after having my old 38 inch monitor replaced from them. And it was a very easy process. Call them up. 20, 30 minute phone call. They sent me a replacement that showed up the next day, which is absolutely insane. I don't know if that's gonna be 100% of the case, if it's the next day or two, but I will say that after having previous customer service experience with Dell, it is pretty good. So I don't really think you have much to worry about. I'm trying to think guys, like what else can I say about this thing? It's really good. I really don't have much bad to say about it other than the fact that I wish that it had built-in speakers because this thing is $1,300 and doesn't include built-in speakers, but there also is no other $1,300 OLED monitor that is exactly the same. Like for that price, you can get a 48 or 42 inch LG OLED monitor or some of the other gaming versions of that, like from Gigabyte or I think Dell or Alienware may have had one in the past. And I think there's another one that's floating out there as well, but they're massive. Like you can't use those competitively if you try. Where this, you got higher refresh rate, 175 Hertz, and you, you kind of could use this competitively if you really wanted to, because it's just that fast as far as responsiveness. Again, it's not as smooth as a 240 Hertz or 360 Hertz monitor, but the lack of motion blur and the great speed that you get from the OLED response time is absolutely insane. So it does make it somewhat competitive with those types of displays. What I would wanna see in the near future, probably not gonna happen, but a, a man can dream, right? What I would wanna see in the near future is a 27 inch 1440p 240 hertz OLED monitor. That would be absolutely insane. I, mean, I think that would be the best dream gaming monitor like in, in general like I, I don't really know if it could get much better than that other than just getting a faster refresh rate because if it had all the exact same specs as this thing and the exact same features creator modes and color profiles and things like that i really don't know what else i would ask from a monitor other than it being bigger at 32 inches as well if i had a 27 inch purely for gaming on pc and competitive nature and whatnot and then I had a 32 inch for a console with HDMI 2.1 at 4K, 144 FPS or 120 FPS, that would be great. Honestly speaking, that would be two insanely good content creation and gaming performance and honestly, general entertainment use 
monitors. Hopefully within the next like 24 months, we get two panels like that. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but that would be great. Otherwise though, in the meantime, if you need something that is uh, more or less the perfect monitor for gaming and entertainment on PC, I really wouldn't look any further than this thing. Like this thing is absolutely insane. I, I don't really know what else bad to say about it other than that weird stuttering issue that I had with Premiere Pro and using it on Windows. But that's all I have for you guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more monitor reviews coming up in the very near future. I have a couple that I think you guys will be really interested in. And uh, yeah, I also can't wait for this thing to actually be in stock because it is April right now and it's currently not estimated until like the first week of June if you order this directly from Dell to get this thing. So if you're interested in it, I would maybe hold off or see if you can find it on Amazon or Best Buy or hopefully by the time that you see this review it's widely available when you can pick this thing up because if you're looking for a single monitor setup this thing is absolutely stellar. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you again for watching.